Welcome. This video here is going to be about completing the square. If you haven't heard it before, math is all about patterns. So this is an important pattern here in taking a binomial, two terms, and squaring it. So in this example here, just generically I use h for, you now you can replace it with any constant you want, like 3, negative 5, 17, whatever. All right. So you get x plus h and that quantity is squared. So it's x plus h times x plus h. We use the derivative property when we multiply it, so we distribute h to both terms up here, and then we're going to distribute the x to both those terms, then we're going to add like terms in the columns. So h times h is h squared, h times x is hx, and then x times h is also hx, so it goes in the x column, and x times x is x squared. Adding like terms, we get 1x squared plus 2hxs plus h squared. So this is our pattern right here. And notice what's going on here. This is the interesting part. Let me pick a kind of a light color for my marker here. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. Okay, so we're going to start here completing the square. We're going to start with this guy. And notice we go from 2h back to the perfect square form, which is the binomial that's being squared. And this is a half relationship. So we take this coefficient on the x. We divide it by 2. That gives us the h, and then we take that h there, and we come back over here, and that is a squared relationship. And now, this guy here is a perfect square trinomial. So I can rewrite this as this binomial, x plus h, quantity squared. If you don't have the right number here, then it's not going to be a perfect square here. So this is our process, because we're going to get x squared plus something x, and plus some number, and we're going to leave a blank spot there to fill in that number. So we're going to take the coefficient on the x, we're going to have it, get the h right here, and then square that number, and that's what we're going to add to the first two terms to complete the square. That's the process. It's not really that hard. You practice it a little bit, you nail it. So you can look on the internet, any questions for, you know, complete the square worksheet, you'll get problems like this. So here we go, completing the square. Here's how it works. x squared plus 6x plus what number makes a perfect square? Well, half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So this guy here is x plus 3, quantity squared. Those two terms there are equivalent. They say the exact same thing. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. So 25 completes the square here, which means this trinomial, another way to write it as a perfect square, is x minus 5, that quantity, squared. Half of 26 is 13. 13 squared is 169. So this trinomial right here, that quadratic expression, is the same as x plus 13 quantity squared. And then half of negative 30 is negative 15. Negative 15 squared is 225. So this quadratic here equals x minus 15. How about we make that an x minus 15. And that whole binomial squared. There we go. Here's one interesting point. I want to make right here is that notice whatever h is, whether h is a positive number or a negative number, when I square it, it's going to be positive. So here, notice this is always positive. If this is negative, that should be a big red flag in your head somewhere that says, I think I jacked something up. I need to go back and check my work. Okie dokie. So here we go to actually complete the square so we can take a quadratic expression and rewrite it in vertex form and be ready to graph it. Let me get my pen set up here. Let's go ahead and do black and go there. Okay, so I have x squared minus 10x plus 19 and, you know, f of x or y equals that. So it's a complete equation. So here's what I'm going to do. First step is I'm going to associate those two guys together. So I have x squared minus 10x in parentheses, right? I leave a spot to make a perfect square, and I just keep the 19 outside there. Notice there's a 1 here. 
if you distribute this and then you'll get the first expression exactly. So this expression here is no different from the first one. Now I want to actually complete the square. So half a negative 10 is negative 5, negative 5 squared is 25. So notice I inserted 25 in here. Now here's what's going on. This is the equal sign. That's the middle of the equation. Typically when we add 25 on this side, we'd add 25 on the, on the other side. But I want that to be f of x or y. I don't want to put any numbers out there. So an alternative to adding the same thing to both sides is, hey, if I add 25 to the right side of the equal sign, then to cancel it, I would add its opposite. And notice if you distribute, hey, 1 times those guys is those guys. So you get x squared minus 10x, right, plus 25. So now the parentheses are gone since I distributed the assumed one that's out here. And then plus 19 and minus 25 or you can say negative 25. And of course, when you go to actually combine those, you notice that, hey, the 25s are going to exactly cancel out and make zero, and that's my original statement right there. So this whole equation right here, when I put the 25 in here and the negative 25 out there, this is the same equation as my original equation. They're equivalent. So I'm good to go. Now I'm going to take this quadratic here and write it in perfect square form. So x squared minus 10x plus 25 is really x minus 5, that whole quantity, squared. And then I simplify by adding those guys, 19 and negative 25 makes negative 6. There we go. That's my answer in vertex form. And now I'm ready to graph. So the vertex is going to be positive 5, comma, negative 6. And the vertical stretch is positive 1. And so this is the mother function. Wow, that is like the definition of sexy. Okay, so there we go. Now, how much harder can this get? Well, it can get a little bit harder. And it'll get a lot harder if you actually suck at fractions. That would that'd be bad for this stage of development, but there are kids that do not do fractions well. Okay, so I start with this guy in vertex or um, in general form. So the function equals 2x squared minus 10x plus 19. Here's the key. I want to make this 1x squared because I want to go back and make this that perfect square in this form here. Notice it's 1x. So I need that to be 1x squared. So I'm going to factor 2 out. But since I'm grouping the x squared and the x terms, I'm also going to factor 2 out of the negative 10. So I do that first. I take 2 out. So if I multiply back, I get 2x squared, I get negative 10x, that checks, plus some number to make a perfect square, plus 19. Now here's the part where it gets complicated with the fractions. What number is this guy here? Well, I'm going to take half of negative 5 and then square it. Well, the problem is when this uh, coefficient here is a an odd number, taking half of it is going to give me a fraction. So half of 5 is 5 halves. And what's 5 halves times 5 halves when I square it? Well, that's going to be 25 over 4. So there we go. So I had 25 over 4 here. Now, oh, I actually jacked that up. I mean, okay, so I had the 25 fourths here. Now here's the tricky part. When I put 25 fourths inside this big parenthet uh, parenthetical expression, this group, right, I actually re really added 2 of everything that's in here. So when I had 25 over 4, I really added 2 25 over 4s. So 2 times 25 over 4 is actually 25 over 2. Okay, so brief explanation on that for those of you that aren't so hot to trot with fractions. So 2 over 1, right, times 25 over 4. The easy way to do that is say, hey, 2 here cancels there. Use the 2 in the denominator, 1 in the numerator. Multiply across the numerators, we get 25 over 1 times 2 is 2. So there we go, 25 halves. And notice, since this is a positive, when I multiply by the 2, it's a positive 25 halves, I add negative 25 halves. Okay, now, here we go, this is the easy part. Uh, this guy, half a negative 5 half, or negative 5 is negative 5 halves, so this is 2 times x minus 5 halves squared. That part's cool. This adding these guys, that's the part that's going to suck for most kids. So I have 19. I want to write it as something over 2. 
So I have 19 over 1. Whenever I do a conversion, mathematically I'm multiplying by 1 using the identity property of multiplication. So basically 1 times 1 number equals something over 2. Well, that means this has to be 2. And for this quantity to be 1, that means the numerator is 2. And 1 times any quantity, same quantity. So 19 times 2 is 38. So 38 divided by 2, that's the same as 19. So I have 38 over 2. And then I'm going to add negative 25 over 2. So now that since they're both halves, they're like terms. So I've got 38 of these half guys, negative 25 of the half guys. I add those guys, I get a total of positive 13 of those half guys. So there we go. And there's my equation in vertex form. And ready to graph. So the vertex is going to be uh, negative five or positive five halves, comma negative thirteen halves, and it's got to stretch it too, so it goes up twice as fast as the mother function. I suck at drawing with the mouse. You probably figured that out already. Okay, but there we go. That's the idea. So, I hope this helped you out. If not, I'm not sure what to tell you. Ciao, baby.